Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Tucker exposes the awful things CNN hosts have been directed to do against Donna Brazile for attacking Hillary. What does CNN do when one of their contributors, who fell in line fully, suddenly turns rogue? Donna Brazile was once known as the woman who helped Hillary Clinton cheat in the primaries. Liberals loved her. But now she is spilling all of Hillary Clinton and the DNC's secrets. So how will they deal with her? Fox's Tucker Carlson explains. According to highly informed sources we spoke to highly informed top management at CNN directed its employees to undermine Brazile's credibility. Anchors and producers were vocally offended by her attacks on their friends, the Clintons, said Carlson. If you've been watching that channel, you may have noticed CNN's anchors suggesting that Donna Brazile cannot be trusted, precisely because she took part in efforts to break the primaries for Clinton, he said. We have already seen this happening. Hillary's campaign insulted Prozile for falling for Russian propaganda. Hillary's former campaign manager Robbie Muck has gone on CNN to insult Prozile. We also don't recall some of the events she said that happened. The allegation she's making simply isn't true, said Muck. Look, I'll be honest with you, I'm sure Donna was under a lot of pressure from her publisher to put this book out right on this election week when we have critical elections happening around the country. I wish she'd just put her foot down and said no, I'm not going to release it around these elections," said Mook. Seth Meyers compares President Trump to an ape, there's one big problem. Imagine how liberals would react if anyone never called Obama an ape. However, when it comes to President Trump, you can say anything and get away with it. President Trump visited with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. After writing angry articles about the way Donald Trump threw fish food into a koi pond, they went on to mocking him for the matching hats he wore with Abe. Late night talk show host Seth Meyers attacked President Trump while wearing a hat that said Resign Donald. Trump strip got off to a rough start on Friday when he flew to Hawaii, which, of course, was the state where former President Obama was born. Trump's motorcade was greeted with protesters lining the streets, reminding him of his past as a birther, with signs like this one that read, Aloha POTUS, Welcome to Kenya. Solid burn. And the interesting thing about the word Aloha is that it means both hello and go F yourself, said Myers. Two problems. First, that's not what Ahula means, and two, Hillary Clinton was the first birther, not President Trump. Abe is a smart man. He figured out the only way to communicate effectively with Donald Trump is via hat, said Myers. Also the hat said, Donald and Shinzo, make alliance even greater? That sounds like what you say to a monkey if you were teaching its sign language. Human and Abe make friendship stronger. But whether Trump is the man in that exchange or the ape or more likely a combo of the two, his Asia trip will be focused in part on dealing with the threat of North Korea's nuclear program, which has the region on edge, said Myers. Donna Brazile shares who she believes really killed Seth Rich, it's huge. According to Julian Assange, Seth Rich was a WikiLeaks informant who had information against Hillary Clinton. He also died in a very mysterious way. Many have wondered if there is a connection between these two events, however most have brushed this off as a conspiracy. However, Donna Brazile has opened up the investigation once again. Although Seth Rich supposedly died in a botched street mugging, Donna Brazile writes that she felt some responsibility for his death. Donna Brazile, who once helped Hillary cheat during the DNC against Bernie Sanders. I felt some responsibility for Seth Rich's death. I didn't bring him into the DNC, but I helped keep him there working on voting rights. With all I knew now about the Russians hacking, 
I could not help but wonder if they had played some part in his unsolved murder, writes Brazile in her book Hacks. Besides that, racial tensions were high that summer and I worried that he was murdered for being white on the wrong side of town. My friend, Elaine expressed her doubts about that, and I heard her. The FBI said that they did not see any Russian fingerprints there, she wrote. Brazile discusses a conversation she had with Hillary. And don't forget the murder of Seth Rich, I old, Hillary. Did she want to contribute to Seth's reward fund? We still hadn't found the person responsible for the tragic murder of this bright young DNC staffer. You're right, she said. We're going to get to that. But she really had to go. She had made the call and checked it off her list, and I accepted after we said our goodbyes that I might never hear from her again, explained Brazile. Crazy Lib Miley Cyrus Called Shooting Terrorism by a White American Man Miley Cyrus, whose career peaked when she was 12, is clearly stuck in a state of permanent mental childhood. Cyrus, who lives in Southern California very far from her Tennessee roots, never fails to spout the latest trendy left-wing talking points whenever a major event happens. Uneducated Cyrus was at it again recently when she responded to the church shooting in Sutherland Springs, Texas by alleging that the killer Devin Patrick Kelly, who was by all accounts deeply mentally ill, was somehow a terrorist. She then made sure to point out that, unlike friendly non-white female foreigners, he was a white American man. Wrote legal expert Miley in a hysterical post on her Instagram account, This is a terrorist act by a white American man. I am heartbroken and embarrassed. Mortified by our country and its shitty system, lack of control laws. When President Donald Trump pointed out Kelly's long history of mental health issues, Cyrus flipped out again, writing, I'd like to believe that every person who takes the life of another being is mentally ill. But I am sorry Donald Trump this absolutely is a gun situation I am aghast by the reaction of my latest post, it is completely amazing to me how defensive and in denial this country really is. Miley wasn't done embarrassing herself. After bringing up again how bitter she still is that Hillary lost, she rambled, so since this tragedy has occurred, coming off the cusp of Vegas, another terroristic act by a white American male, don't start to be all innocent. Gender, race, and religion has and continues to matter for all the wrong reasons and that's only the beginning of how backwards this country is. All of you are so focused on protecting yourself. You've completely forgotten that you're not the only one that has to live in this country or on this planet. She continued, aren't you exhausted? Because to be honest I am fucking sick and tired of starting every day with tears and in mourning. Let's unite. Trump never needed to build a wall for us, we've done it ourselves. Do you think Miley needs to go on medication? Breaking Bin Laden's son just ordered Muslims to do something sick to Americans. Following the killing of September 11th mastermind Osama Bin Laden by Navy SEAL Team 6, Americans probably breathed a sigh of relief thinking that one dark chapter in our country's history had finally ended. Unfortunately, Osama's son Hamza is evidently intent on picking up right where his father left off. Spurred by his terrorist father's demise, the younger bin Laden recently put out a 25-minute video titled Osama the Fighter Against Invaders and Insider of Rebellion Against Tyrants through al Qaeda's media unit in which he urged young Muslims to take action against Americans. Said Hamza, I invite Muslims generally to take revenge from the Americans, the murderers of the Sheikh, Osama bin Laden, specifically from those who participated in this heinous crime, making reference to his father's killing. He went on. Rise in rebellion against oppression and tyranny, revolt against the agents of the Americans, initiate armed uprisings to overthrow them and establish the Sharia. The young bin Laden, who is now in his twenties, added, Rise in rebellion against the arrogant tyrants. The Imam, Osama, may Allah have mercy on him, departed this world encouraging and inciting you to continue the journey of the revolutions.
urging members of al-Qaeda to attack Americans and other Westerners using arms, Hamza ascribed that an iron is only blunted by an iron. Do you think that America needs to take action against Hamza? Kill shot President Trump just gave Mitch McConnell very bad news minutes ago. President Trump just hammered the do-nothing Congress. Republican Majority Leader Mitch McConnell attacked Trump this week and said that Trump had excessive expectations for Congress. Senator Mitch McConnell said I had excessive expectations, but I don't think so. After seven years of hearing repeal and replace, why not done? Tweeted President Trump. The president was not through with Mitch McConnell, though. The president then tweeted out this Thursday that the U.S. Senate needs to get back to work. Trump is exposing these swamp monsters for the losers that they are. They don't know how to win. They don't know how to work. They need to be voted out of office. Share this if you are going to be voting for the removal of all the Renos in Congress next year. It's time to start getting rid of these losers. They are a drain on the nation so let's drain them out of the swamp. Gom is sitting right in North Korea's crosshairs but just struck back with Trump's secret weapon. The tension continues to mount between the United States and North Korea. Just yesterday, the out-of-control regime threatened an attack on the United States territory of Guam. Hundreds of thousands of United States citizens and military men and women are living in Guam right now. So Kim Jong-un has absolutely, directly, threatened the United States. If you'd like to know more about this tiny American territory, click here. The citizens of Guam don't get to vote for president, but they do elect their own governor and that man's name is Eddie Calvo. And Governor Calvo has voiced his full support of President Trump's recent statements to North Korea. Here's what he said, As far as I'm concerned, as an American citizen, I want a president that says that if any nation such as North Korea attacks Guam, attacks Honolulu, attacks the West Coast, that they will be met with hell and fury. Calvo said that he's confident in Guam's defense capabilities based on multiple briefings with the military. He said, there is no panic. And I think it's important to be strong, but at the same time be calm. I've had enough briefings with the military, there's a multi-layered defense starting from Korea, Japan as well as in the Western Pacific as well as our assets here in Guam with a THID missile defense system that American communities will be protected. Even though he didn't get to vote for Trump, it's pretty clear he backs him completely. If you do, too, please comment I support Trump and Guam and share, share, share. H. T. The Hill